Hey, this is Julian, and I'm here with Medusa and my brother Matthew. And I wanted to introduce everybody to uh, two of the most greatest people I know because we have tons of philosophical discussions all the time. Of course, uh, Matthew and I have been growing up together and learning about all the 5D stuff at the same time. And I've, of course, last year I met Medusa, and we're partners now, and we talk about stuff all the time too. So uh, we're we all, we all love talking about um, all sorts of things in this new age that we're in. And uh, I basically wanted to try out this system of recording two, you know, recording both sides of you. So this is an experiment. And um, Lately, Matthew's been writing a, uh, a blog and actually responding to a couple of questions regarding the subject of money. And I've found that, yeah, I've found that his material is very awesome. It really come, comes down to a lot of uh, cutting, cutting to the truth, right? Cutting down the myths. Yeah. yeah. yeah so it's kind of like getting to the root <laughs> of the truth. Um, yeah. You are. You're, this is about, I would say we started talking about this at the beginning of last week or so, something like that. week or two ago. Don't yeah. yeah, I was, I'll start with, with where I was coming from. Um, I was going through a position where I was looking at, like, you know, basically declaring bankruptcy. I'm like, oh, my God, this, this stuff's ramping up. My income's not working with my outgoing, you know. And I'm kind of, you know, I'm like, I don't even know how this is happening. You know, like at one point I'm doing okay, you know, before acquiring the expense. And now I'm, you know, it's not okay. And I'm trying to figure out how to cut corners. And basically every corner I cut just is leading me down to this path of like, oh, you got to do bankruptcy or something. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. You know, I, you know, I don't even know what bankruptcy is. So I started actually researching bankruptcy and trying to figure out what, was really going on and find out it is like really shifty actually yeah. <laughs> it's not as as appealing as it once sounded <laughs> like there's like two different kinds of bankruptcies there's like chapter 7 and chapter 13 yeah. and uh, I'm not going to get into the differences but basically you're still paying money you're still owing and you're still screwed on so many levels the only thing that you're not screwed in is if you don't give a crap about having a credit rating or anything or using credit whatsoever, you're actually you're actually like basically off the credit system. And that's what I wanted to talk yeah. about is actually this whole corralling system, even bankruptcy, actually is more for the creditors, not for the people that are stuck at all. It's like the bankruptcy system was written by the loaners. So I was like, wow, that's... That's incredible. I thought, you know, it was some kind of benefit given to the American people that they demanded, but in fact, it's not. It's like... <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah, it's like just another way of, like, getting your debts paid. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> so we were talking, you and I, about um, about how, you know what, they, they, they just need to tax you on something. And credit is another form of tax, right? To make sure of, you know, all first. I mean, what do we discover, really? The best way to keep anyone from being in a, in a place of, of, you know, being high about themselves is to always feel like you're not 100%, mm -hmm. right? To always have something tapping you, to always have something bothering you, you know? Well, well can I interject now? Yeah, 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 go ahead. <laughs> Well, how should I say? Me, it's all about your focus, and that's getting into the details. The details is important at a practical level to come up with a solution, but it shouldn't be the main focus. And when you think about the details, it shouldn't be, shouldn't you should detach your emotional attachment to it. And if we th step back a bit and try and remember or see how we create things. We've been learning, it's been a long time, Abraham Hicks material is out, the law of attraction. Uh, you know, we create our own reality. This is beginning to be very known, you know, create our own reality by the thoughts we think and how we, and what we think about our emotional, uh, how we feel about things. And so when it comes to money, I remember 
Maybe I should start where I learned how to change my attitude about money. Okay, that sounds good. Probably the best way to start. I remember I was focused on money for as long as I can remember. It was an issue for me since even childhood. Mm -hmm. So I was like, we were poorer than everyone else. It was my goal to earn money and everything I did failed to make more money. I always struggled, I struggled, I struggled until one day, and no, and then the, the material of Abraham Hicks came along. I was trying to apply the, the principles of seeing positive, but I'm at one point I'm like, well, I'm just playing mental tricks with myself. I can't <laughs> pretend that I feel good about money. I don't feel crap. Whenever I think about money, I feel bad. Any way I look at it, I try to convince myself, repeat things, do all kinds of mental tricks to see it in a positive manner and it just wouldn't work. It just, I realized at one point, I'm being honest with myself, there's not a single way I can look at money and I feel good about it. It just, I'm like, ah, I give up. I'm like, I'm done. I'm not thinking about money anymore. I'm tired, it doesn't make me feel good. I'm always upset, I'm stressed, I'm anxious, all kinds of stuff. So this is when I was in France and I was like, there's, just barely had enough. I always had enough money to survive. Somehow there was always just enough to get by, but there was never like a grain more. Just enough. Right. Yeah. The struggle, struggle, struggle. Just, just enough. And it was almost miraculous too that the fact that there was always just enough and I was never in super deep trouble. So this was at one point I'm like, oh, you know what? There's no way I can think about money in a positive way. I'm just gonna forget it. I'm just going to say, I don't, I don't want to think about it. It doesn't feel good. I'm just going to, so I decided I was doing my budget once a month for one hour. <clears throat> and, and then I do all my calculations for one whole hour. I can feel crappy when I'm doing it, whatever, stressed out. So every time I do my budget, I feel like shit. Yeah, right? yeah. I know. So then, and I think about my problems, like, oh my God, what a nightmare. This is no good. So I do all my calculations. I know exactly how much I can have every week for food. This is this is for this. This is all the bills. I don't know. There's nothing left over. And even when I go to the grocery stores, I would make sure that when I'm looking at the prices, it's just a mental calculation, a math calculation. It's just, just you know, it's just a math calculation. There's no emotion. It's just like I have this much to calculate. Da, da, da. Don't think about this or that or oh, I wish I had more. Or, this is expensive. And don't put price tag when I think about things because we are all been trained to think everything in terms of money, like how everything has a price on it. Everything costs this, costs that. Every time, oh, I'd love to do that, but it costs money and I don't have money. So this idea of money is constantly coming up all the time, right? I'd like to, think, I'd like to oh, I'd love to do that, oh, we don't have money. So every time money comes into my, my mind, it just you know, feels negative or feels depressing or something. So I'm like, that's it. I'm removing money out of the equation. Money doesn't exist. I just take care of a technical aspect. I'm like, that's it. So then, it didn't take long because I'm actually pretty good at blocking out ideas or just stop thinking about it. I was like, I'm, that's it, no more. I like, not thinking about that. There's many more things to think about. And I realized that it was right away, within a couple of days, even a week, it was liberating. I felt much lighter. I felt like no more money aspects in my life. I just feel lighter. I mean, I took care of it at a technical aspect. So I said, I took, you know, find, you know, the calculation I did, it's gonna work, just barely. You know, I can't buy anything extra, but I'm just not thinking about money. Then I start feeling better and there's no more bad feelings about money because I'm not thinking about it, but I'm not being stupid and ignoring it. I'm taking, you know, I made a calculation. So there's immediately an instant uh, release of burden that happens. You're not really worried about money anymore. It's just, it's just a technical thing to get by. So then all kinds of other thoughts coming in. And you know, I can think about other things. I'm just more liberated in my, my mental state. I can think about other things and I can start dreaming about things. I'm not like, cause I would stop myself from dreaming because I would always put a price tag on it. Like, oh, I'd love to do this, but I'll, I don't have any money. I'll never do it. I'm always thinking about the how, how I'm gonna get it done and the how is always money. I can't get it done because in my head, trying to calculate it will never happen because I don't have money, you know? I can't do it, this costs money, so I can't do that. I'd love to go there, but I can't because it costs money. And I'm jealous of these people, they're all going on vacation all the time and I can't do the same thing because I was like, where do they get the money? How come I don't have money? This is not fair. Why do I have less money than everyone else? So 
all these thoughts, you know, you just, everything is associated, all that's associated with money, and starts, and you just drop it, and then that's it, I just felt better, life wasn't instantly better, right, it didn't instantly change, but I noticed after a while that money just, all of a sudden, hey, this money just came out of nowhere, oh, that's nice, you know, but I'm still not getting invested, just whatever, whatever, money invested. And then, you know, and then uh, I just had, had made, you know, a decision in myself. There's a, you know, strong decision, you know, I'm done. I'm done, I'm done playing that game. Just, it's not, you know, it's gone. And then from that day forward, no more money problems. And then money just started coming more and more and more. It made no sense. Just how come it shows up when I, I'm not looking for it anymore? And that's the strange thing about life. You desire something forever, and then when you finally let go of it, and you decide to, that you, you don't need it, well, that's when it shows up. So there's some kind of like inner resistance or attachment. You, when you need it, it's just like, it's just, it's like pushes it away. You know, it's like when you let go, it doesn't matter. You're not attached. It's like, it's, that's when things happen. So you're thinking about like, so getting back to you and the bankruptcy thing, you're thinking about all the details, right? Mm -hmm. I would try and find the simplest solution, a technical, I mean, I'm sure you can find a solution, technically, that would work, right? But the thing we need to remember is to focus on how we feel. And how do you want to feel? Do you want to be stressed out about money? Do you, do you like focusing on it? If it gets you excited and you know feels good? Some people are able to feel positive about money. For me, I just, I wasn't able to do it, but so I would, you know, take care of it at a the best you can at a at a technical level, but don't focus on it too much, you know. But also try to not get emotionally involved. Think of it like just detach your whole emotional side of things. You become like a you know a mathematician now. You're just playing with numbers. Da -da -da -da. It's a math equation. No emotional investment. You deal with it like that, it's a calculation, and that's it. No, I mean, obviously you can't turn off emotions right away, but it, it's something that happens, you know, you can do it gradually, and you just, you're putting less and less energy into it. And uh, the whole money system is about, it's about, how should I say, if they get your attention, if they get, if you believe in the system and if you play the game, you're giving your energy to it. it. Like if you're any kind of emotional investment, you're giving your energy to it. So if people are calling up like creditors and they're making you feel bad, then you begin to actually feel bad about it. You could deal with that too. Let's say, uh, like I have a thing now with my phone. Like I'm tired of just being solicited out of nowhere. For whatever you know, I I've, I used to try and be respectful to people who solicit me on the phone for whatever. I pick up the phone and I'm like, if within 30 seconds I don't know who they are, I'm confused. And I don't know what they want. Click. I don't even say excuse me. No, I'll try to be polite. You know that they're, they're not being polite by calling me and imposing themselves. Someone out of the blue. I'm like. I don't even know what you, you, what you want. Click. But as soon as I recognize, it's like, ah, whatever. You know, you pick up, credit, oh, hang on. You look at the number, oh, same again, don't pick up. Whatever. It's like, I mean, I would even change the phone number, you know, if you get too hassled. But whatever, you know, you do what you got to do to not get disturbed. Don't, don't fall for it. Don't get into the trip. Don't have a discussion with these people. Yeah, they almost like tricked me into having a discussion. I'm like, well, you seem nice, but like, wait a second, wait a second, this is all a ruse. This is all to get me. The scam. Yeah. They're trying to. They're manipulating you. I've learned that too. The energy of manipulation. When you feel they're fishing, you know, compliments. They're not very polite. So they're, okay, I'm gonna be polite too. I'm not gonna be you know mean to people and everything. But it's 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 not it's it's fake, right? It's a game. It's like you you want to play the game? Go ahead. If you if you like if you want, if you feel like letting off some steam, giving them shit and yelling at them, go ahead. It makes you feel good. <laughs> so, but, 
So, uh-huh. Lisa, you were talking a little bit about um, your recent revelations or thoughts on money, and you're saying that it's been a theme for you in the past couple of weeks. Now, um, do you want to share a little bit about some of the strange things that have gone on, the things that you've noticed and the stories that you've heard relative to money recently? Yeah. Um, I've been thinking about uh, a lot of what, um, what Matthew has been saying about, you know, the harder um, you hold on to the desire of wanting something, the least likely you are to you know, get it. But when you, um, you know, let go of the whys and the hows, this is what I've been thinking about you know, when it comes to anything, not just money, but when you let go of the why and the how and you sink into the feeling of how um, you know, getting whatever it is you want feels, and you put that out there and you kind of you know, leave the rest to God, it's, it's just like boom, 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 synchronicity, synchronicity, synchronicity. <laughs> Yeah, it's about focusing on how, how you're feeling. You, you choose what you want to focus, what feels good. Like, you say you want something, it's like, when I think about that, it feels good. You think about, I'd love to go there on vacation, but it's, and then it stops there. You don't continue on, but how am I going to get there? How am I going to do it? No. Then when you think about the how, it just messes it up. Then you feel bad, and you're like, it's impossible. Oh, I'm depressed. No, so just think about the how, how it feels, you focus on things that feel good. Oh, I'd love this. You know what? I have a story about that. This was when I was, uh, I think, about 21. It was the craziest manifestation. I remember, I, at one time, I'm, I'm like, you got like a parrot in your place. What? You got like a parrot in your place. A what? No, 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 it was the kids, whatever. Jamie, okay. whatever. <laughs> Um, yeah, so at one point I just had this, this simple thought. I'm like, I see a motorcycle and I'm like, I think I, I would really like to have a motorcycle. That would be really nice. And that's all I thought. That's it. Didn't think about anything else. I just I had it once and I thought that would be really nice to have a motorcycle. That would be really cool. And I didn't think about how much it cost, whatever. I just thought in myself, imagine myself, that would be really nice. And then like a week later, there's it's my Honda Goldwing that showed up. And then it was like, it was, uh, it just happened to be, you know, available, $500. And, and I look at my account, that's exactly how much I had. I I'm like, oh my God, it's, like, it's the craziest thing, you know, it's like, the thing was worth a lot more. But I'm like, so it's like, so I have a couple examples when, when I think about the how, it doesn't manifest. If I just have that simple thought, you know, oh, that would be really nice. And if there's if it, it's in alignment and it brings a positive, it's going to bring a positive experience to me. Then it's allowed to to occur. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a similar little story from uh, work last night. So um, I was like super hungry, and I was there's a bar next door, and they have amazing chicken strips, like the best chicken strips ever. But I didn't have any cash on me or whatever, and I was just like imagining how awesome it would be to have chicken strips, and I was like, yeah, okay, and then I just forgot about it. And like an hour later, this girl in the back. I uh, was heading home and she's like, oh, hey, I have these chicken strips and fries from next door if anyone wants them. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, universe. There it is. <laughs> yep, Things like that happen all day now. <laughs> Sometimes there's no need to think about the how. Work the stuff out. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one thing that I want to take note and actually bring up just in a quick discussion. I know you got to go, man. But um, there – there are a lot of people who are like, I really want to, there's this thing right here and I really want to figure it out. Like it's not working or I don't have enough money for this very specific thing. Let's just say rent. I think a lot of people are familiar with that and they can't pay the rent. And, um, you know, and they see it as a need, you know, they don't want to move. Uh, or they don't feel like they even have like a down deposit for like you know a new place to move. So they can't even go to a new a cheaper place because they don't even have a deposit for that. And people are feeling that sort of sort of that that squeeze or whatever. I mean, what 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 would you say to somebody who's in that sort of like dire circumstance? I mean, is it just to like forget that you have rent, or uh, is this what 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 would be your basic basic? Well, I would say there's different scenarios playing out sometimes sometimes it's about just your 
your standpoint, whether you're positive or negative. And sometimes things are just going to play out no matter what you do, what you think. And you have to do your best to be okay with it. It's still about choosing, it's about choosing your inner state. Yes, you can't pay the rent. Eventually you lose it, you move. If you're all stressed out about it, you, you have to be able to let go, you know, you have to be able to go with the flow. If you get all stressed out, ah, the end of the world, ah, well, things aren't going to get, you're not going to feel any better. You really need to get a point of letting go, you know, in my life, all kinds of crap has happened, you know, all the time. It's like bad luck after bad luck after bad luck and nothing's working out and shit happens. What can I say? It's like... <laughs> It's, at one point, it's, you have to, you, I realize that the most important thing is creating an inner space. And these are the circumstances you need to be able to reach a space where you feel good no matter what happens. You have to be okay with worst case scenario. I can give you an example. Now, this is not exactly the same as, as the rent thing, but when I was in France and I wanted to move back to Canada, uh, I remember thinking, I have a house, I have to sell it, and then uh, I want to go back as soon as I can. There's all these technical I issues, like uh, I have to ask my company if they're willing for me to work from home, and I'm like... And just to remind everybody, like, so know, many what? Just, just to remind everybody who doesn't know Matthew's scenario, uh, Matthew and I are from uh, Quebec, Canada, so when he's saying he wants to return, he wants to move back to Quebec. Yeah, I was living in France, had been 12 years, and... I wanted to move back from Canada. Mm -hmm. So, but there was all these things I didn't know. It's like there was no order, the like correct order. It's like if I have to wait for the house to be sold, then I could wait a year, and then I can move back. But I really want, I really want to move back. I can't stand living here anymore. It's not my home, right? But then I have to go for me to be able to move back. I have to find a house before I move. At the, other, at the other end of Canada, and then my boss is accept to work for me, otherwise I gotta find a job before I go. And how are you gonna do that? And I was like, everything's like, ah, ah. you know, how are you gonna do this? Like, it's, it seemed like an impossible thing. Everything was interdependent, right? For just to be able to move. And I'm like, how am I gonna do this? And then, I real, and then I had to think about, all right, what's the most important thing? The most important thing is that I physically get myself and my kids over to Canada and that's it. If that's all I managed to do, I've succeeded, right? Drop everything. Boss doesn't want me to work for them anymore, you know. Uh, and I'll have to find another job. I grow back. I have no money. I don't have a penny. Just enough money to play for the paint tickets. All my stuff is, is left behind. I can't bring it. I don't have the money to bring it and ship it. It's like I'm thinking, worst case scenario, I lose everything and I get back. I have no money, no job, nothing. Right. And I can't be a pro. I don't get a programming job. I have to do something else that pays less. And I'm like, am I willing to accept that? And I'm like, yes. I, I think that's the most important. You have to accept the worst case scenario. So I'm like, okay, worst case scenario, I'm going to be okay with it. You know, what's really important is that I get a job, is that I move to Canada. That's my greatest desire. You know, if I lose everything, I'm sure I'll, I'll get my feet, get back on my feet at one point, whatever. So I had that relaxation, relax about the stress of the situation of how to get to where I needed to go. So I let go of it. Okay, where's this now? So I go see my boss. I'm relaxed. I'm like, I'm moving. And I just said, I'm moving to Canada. That's it. And uh, if you want to work for me, I'll work for you. I'd like to work for you. It'd be nice, you know, you know. And of course they accepted. But if I had gone to my boss and said, I'd like to move to Canada. And in me, I'm like, but it depends if you want, you know, to keep me on, you know, to keep working with me. If, it's, if I'm moving to Canada depending on them, then they might be like, hmm, well, we'll say no, that way he won't move to Canada, we get to keep him. Right? So it's like, you can't put your power in other people either. It's like, so. It's really about accepting worst case scenario, being okay with it, and then you make your decision. This is what's happening, and if other people in the situation wants to be on board with you, then fine. So, so we're in an apartment. You can't pay the rent. You really got to learn to 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 be okay with worst case scenario, to, so you can relax a bit. And when you relax, and you're feeling in a state that everything's okay, I'm not gonna die. I'm not gonna starve to death. You know, bring things down to basics. I'm alive. Start thinking, what am I grateful for? I'm grateful, you know, what I have. And 
it's okay, you know, it's not the end of the world, and, and something will work out, or whatever. And, and the more you relax, the more things just magically work out on their own. Or sometimes there is a scenario where it goes to worst case scenario, and that is, I would say, more of a higher self decision to learn something. You just have something to learn from the experience. Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's just you have to learn to deal with it or let go, and sometimes you have to go through all the way to the end because somehow your, your higher self decided you need a kick in the butt, you need a lesson, you have a lesson to learn, and that's that. And you have to learn to be okay with it and get over and learn whatever you have to learn. And that's it. I think that's a really key point. You made two really big things that I wanted to share. I know it's getting late here, but one is our higher being is stubborn sometimes when it tries to get us to learn something. And as many times as we try to like, like, you know, try to make it work, like in the case of me trying you know, to avoid bankruptcy, it's almost like, you know what, you, you're supposed to do bankruptcy. Or you're supposed to do something like that. You're supposed to know what it's like to not pay your bills. And I'm like, oh, really? Oh, can't I just learn the lesson and pay my bills and be happy? <laughs> you know? You have to accept worst case scenario and be okay with it. Yeah. If, that's, if there's no other choice, it's like, there's not, if it's like, no point in crying over spilled milk. If there's no other solution, that's the only way, well then what's there to think about? You know, then drop, stop thinking about it. That's It's a done deal, you know? Well, you know how it is with money though, right? You can see, oh, by the end of the month, I won't be able to cover my bills. <laughs> so you can see it coming is, is what probably makes you more worried than actually being there at that point, mm -hmm. you know? Yes, so it's really to learn to get out of the worrying, which is learning, worst case scenario, say, you have to, it's, it's, it's dealing with your fear of lack of money. That's what it is. Bring it back to the, the essential. You don't feel good. Okay, let's deal with that feeling. Why don't you feel good? Deal with, the, with your fear. Face your fear. So in your head, okay, what's the worst thing that can happen? Da -da -da, domino. Da -da -da. Oh, I'm a bum on the street. I'm starving and I die. Like, okay. <laughs> Oh, God. Like, oh, it's like, fine. <laughs> okay, let me die. It's like, <laughs> okay, you got to deal with your fear, right? It's like, you have to be okay with it. It's like, okay, I'll accept it if it happens, whatever, if, if that's what's supposed to happen, but I don't want it to happen, but whatever. You have to relax the fear, I should say. Not get into the fear. And then things magically work themselves up. Don't. Think like, if I relax, then it'll magically work out. Oh, it didn't work out, that didn't work, damn. No, you really have to be okay with it. If, they come, if the worst case scenario comes along, okay, you're ready. You know? You've accepted it, you've dealt with it. So, uh, the other thing that I wanted to bring up is actually this sense that I get that what you're really doing is you're honing in on what's actually important. You know, like, what's the truth of why, you know, you're afraid of money or why you're afraid of getting kicked out of your apartment mm -hmm. or what, what you're really afraid of there? Because it's kind of like, you just know, I don't want to be kicked out of my apartment. Well, what, what's the big deal about getting kicked out? I mean, what are you facing? What's the after you get kicked out of your apartment that you're so afraid of? You know, yeah. look at that with a critical eye. And if you don't, and if you can absolve that pain, and you know, come to a comfortable place with what happens after. Oh, I'm gonna to have to live with my friend. Okay, you know, what bothers you about having to ask to live with your friends? You know, okay, maybe you know you don't want to you don't want to look like you can't take care of yourself. Well, you know, is you know is that something that's really gonna you know are you gonna commit suicide over that or can you deal with that? You know, are you giving up if that has to happen or can you live with yourself? Asking your friends for help, you know, uh, and you know, is your ego so big that, you know, you can't uh, admit that, you know, you you need some help from someone else. Sometimes mm -hmm. that's the scenario too, you know. People All want to be like, kinds of things go through your oh, head. You gotta. So work. I'm like, get, to, it, get to feel the it, deal with it. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I had another way of looking at it. You can look at it. Uh, Let's say you can lose your apartment. I've had, I call it grieving. Grieving 
in advance. You have a fear of loss, and sometimes it has this, you have to play out that fear of loss and losing. And you can grieve in advance, or should I say. When you accept interior, in, in, inside that you've lost this object, like me at one time was a car. Didn't want to let go of the car, I love that car. And I had like inner grieving, like, you know, I had to grieve and then I was finally able to get rid of it. It's like, that's, it's, it's a form of acceptance, right? You know, you've met, you're super attached to something, you want, to, you don't want to let it go. It's like, I gotta keep that, I can't lose it, what's gonna happen if I lose it? And you can't think of how you're gonna survive without it. And so, there's like, you can, you can, once you've accepted it, there's like an inner grieving that goes by, goes through and then whether it actually happens or not, once you've, you've dealt with it, it's, it's, it's not as important and usually it won't happen. But some things, you know, you have to let go of. And you can't to attach to things. And although I'd like to say, and I've, I've, I've seen that, I've seen looking into that, like you accept it before it appears. And sometimes, sometimes if you really did handle the source of it, that source is no longer magnetically attracting you to that negative point of, of experience. Like yeah. Get over it before it pulls you all the way down, almost. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. uh, but, of course, if I say that, that's Pandora's box. Oh, I'm just going to get over it, and now it won't happen. Uh, no, yeah. Your mind yeah. plays tricks on you. Yeah. You think, oh, I found the solution, and then like, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, no, I thought it. It's like, it's like a chess game with your mind. You can't play on the level of the mind. It doesn't work. You have to bring it back to a feeling and deal with that. If you're doing mental tricks with yourself, trying to convince yourself, oh, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a trap of the matrix. The mind. And a lot of that, I think, happens when people who are like, oh, screw Law of Attraction, Abraham Hicks. But that's because they're all doing it in their head, right? They're all like, oh, I, but I did my, I, I attracted that, and I, and I never attracted that. And they're like, you're not paying attention to, you know, the leader of the band here, which is your heart, you know. Yeah. It's like, yeah, your mind gets you in trouble. The heart just fixes everything. Bring it back to there, reside in there, and then, then let it flow, you know, like emotions. Let, let the emotion flow through. Don't stay stuck in them either, just to think you. I've had people do that too, and it's crazy. Some people, they go to therapy for 20 years, like, what? You're still working out the issues when you're five years old? For 20 years you've been doing this? <laughs> So I'm not coming back. I'm not going here. <laughs> I'm not coming to this one. <laughs> Some people say, oh, I got to work on my childhood issues. And they go back to it and they restore it up and they bring it back up. Oh, I'm working it out. And then, you know, okay. And then every every month they bring it back out. I got to work it out. No, once it's done, it's done. Let it go. Don't like bring it back. Right. Focus on what you do want. Yeah. And then start, you know, if it comes up, then let it flow, let it come out. Deal with your emotional issues or let it flow and then when you're more liberated then you can focus on what you want and how you want to feel well i want to thank you matt for joining us today and taking this time out um i said we're going to have lots of uh talks again in the future i don't know if we can get them all on video but we'll try um i like it seeing people and and it really gets you to empathize more and gets you more into uh, into the conversation, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'm, of course, going to have a lot more conversations with you. We're going to start doing um, discussions on educating people about um, astrology. And uh, I'm excited for that. We're going to be doing that on video. So look forward to those. And, um, and see you all next time. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Talk to you next time.